here children I have marked the eastern highlands in this uh, map on the board so here you can see that there I have used a symbol to mark the mountains and this is the major symbols that we have been using and since childhood we make the ma uh, mountains like this only right children so here you can see a clear difference between the mountains in the north and the shape of mountain in the southern portion along the eastern coast and the shape of mountains in the northern uh, portion of the eastern coast. Now what is the difference? We just discussed the difference that the mountains are broad and low in the north. That means they are very broad but they are less in height in comparison to the southern mountains. So what are the adjectives we are using for them? They are broad and low. That is the first difference. Whereas the mountains in the southern portion are narrow and high. That means these mountains are pretty narrow but are high in altitude. That means high in their height. These are shorter in height but we will not use those terms so I don't want to use those terms in my explanation also. The only adjectives which we are going to use is broad and low. Now low we need to understand that is your height or the altitude of the mountain which is low in the northern portion, northern area of Australia whereas the mountains have a larger height or they are um, simply taller in comparison to the mountains in the north but we will only use the adjectives as narrow that means they are occupying lesser space in terms of the width and they're narrow and high the second most important difference is that what is the gradient or what is the slope of the mountains as you can see I have not made a normal triangle to show you a mountain no this is not the correct way these mountains have a slope in the specifically along the eastern coast of Australia that is your eastern highlands I have clearly made a specific slope towards the central area or the central portion of Australia and you can see the line along the eastern coast of Australia is a, merely a straight line so what will we call it what will be the main adjectives which we can use to describe this special kind of a triangle that I have made we simply say that the mountains side facing the east is steep but the side facing the west slope generally slopes towards the central lowland area so here you have a gentle slope and this side you have a steep slope here children i've written it also you can understand again i'm repeating the side along your eastern coast is steep and the side which is facing the west slope on the western side here moving towards the central uh, lowland area of Australia. This side of the mountain is extremely gently flowing towards it. So you have a gentle slope. Now the slope is also given another name that is the gradient. And I have used the word gradient in the question to ask you that uh, please describe the characteristics in the terms of altitude that is the high you know the northern mountains are low in height and whereas the mountains in the southern portion are much taller or you can say they are narrow and high higher in the south in comparison to the northern mountains i hope with this this is pretty clear what is the characteristic features about the altitude also and about the gradient also. Now here children when you look at this map and you see this 3D picture of it you can clearly see what we were discussing that the mountains are broad and low in the northern portion but narrow and high in the south. 
and the side facing the east of these mountains which is not clear in this picture obviously is much steeper but the side facing the slope they are always gently flowing or sloping towards the central lowland area yeah children you can see the name great dividing range has been used and uh, we, i have continuously been saying the eastern highlands eastern highlands and they are also known as the great dividing range but we must be wondering why this name has been given to it why is it called the great dividing range number one reason for it being called the great dividing range is that it acts as a watershed between the rivers flowing towards the east and those flowing towards the westward but basically these were given the great dividing name because although they are not very high but the eastern highlands they were a uh, they were supposed to be a great barrier to the early settlers or the aborigines out there so they came to be known as the great dividing range so this name has been there since a long time so if it is asked in the give reasons you can easily mark both of them as your answer if two reasons are asked you can easily write both of them and i have mentioned them clearly in my ppt also now these eastern highlands are actually called the gregory ranges in the queensland state the blue mountains and the new england range in the new south wales they are also sometimes in some books you will find them as plateau written out there and uh, in victoria that is in the state of victoria they are called the australian alps or australian alps are also considered to be um, individual uh, small the smaller ranges which are actually not joined to the entire great dividing range so here you have these particular names but the most important point you need to learn out here is the highest peak of the eastern highlands that is the mount kosciusko now we'll be marking the mountains before we mark the mountains let us also know about the rivers which are originating in the eastern highland that is the river snowy and we have already marked these three rivers that is the river darling lachlan and murambagi in the previous class so we are well aware of these three rivers and uh, we'll now mark the mountain ranges in our maps we will first mark the great dividing range and then we'll also mark the australian alps so as we have already stated that they run parallel to the eastern coast from cape peninsula so we'll be beginning here onwards i would request everybody to mark along with me as i have been repeating they are narrow and high in the south but they are broad and low so in the north we keep the thickness a little more than we are going to proceed further in the south so this will be a little thicker portion and gradually we'll taper down the breadth of these mountains while we are marking in the map also here children very crudely we have marked it although it's not accurate but then this is the major demarcation that we can show on the map after drawing it we will neatly write the great dividing range over it and then we'll proceed further to mark the australian alps here children i've clearly marked the australian alps i've kept kept a demarcation in between so that we know clearly which ranges we are marking separately although there are a jo uh, joining hills in between but then we have separated them so that we know clearly that these are the great dividing ranges and this is the australian alps in what victoria here children after marking it with the brown color pencil you will clearly write australian alps now we are saying alps i think we have heard this word before where are the other alpine mountains where can somebody please write it on the gcr and let me know where are the alps and then i'm asking where are the alps i'm not talking about the australian alps here children you only need to make sure that your rivers that is your river darling lachlan and murambagi they are all flowing down the western slope of your australian alps and they are joining the river murray so make sure you are touching your rivers into these mountains moving ahead with your homework children you only have three questions please make sure you mark them 
and in the next class we'll be marking the mount cos kisco and then we'll moving be moving ahead with the central lowland feature of australia thank you class thank you so much children stay safe and keep smiling